Gentlemen, before we start the meeting proper, um, you probably noticed we're shooting part of the new film that we're making, and we'd ask you, if you would, to bear with us, bear with the slight noise that the filming may make and with the bright light. But if any delegate finds a situation quite intolerable, if they would ask, we will ask the, the cameraman and the director to stop shooting and turn the lights out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. My turn to the Director General to present this report to the Council. The Council of CERN is made up of delegates from the 13 member states. The purpose of the European Organization for Nuclear Research is to further collaboration in scientific research of a purely fundamental nature. CERN is not concerned with nuclear power and does no military work. The results of its research are published or in other ways made freely available. During the meetings of the Council, there are scientists, civil servants, diplomats, all mixing together, can't even tell them apart, all of them passionate about particle physics, accelerators. On a souvent dit que CERN naît d'un désir commun de physiciens d'avoir des instruments de travail qui n'étaient plus à l'échelle d'un seul pays en Europe. CERN arose from the common desire of European physicists to have equipment bigger than a single country could provide. But this is only a part of the story. At that time, diplomats and statesmen in Europe were keenly interested in the idea of European unity and wanted to see this exemplified in an important cultural enterprise. Nineteen fifty one, UNESCO calls an intergovernment conference. Nineteen fifty two, Geneva is chosen as seat. Nineteen fifty four, site work begins. scheme was to build a machine bigger than any in the world. It was a project that was both ambitious and clearly defined, but it was going to need the breaking of new ground all the way. The outstanding thing is that it worked. 